Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the dashboard tools that allow you to take a species distribution model and your understanding of your current species distributions and predict into the future under different climate change scenarios how that species distribution is expected to change. And this is one of the things that the platform is best at. Um, but it's also probably one of the things that the user needs to take the most care with. So like all of our dashboard tools, it's easy to press buttons and, and get some results, but to get good results, you've got to think about what you're doing. So we'll just open up the platform again and go through, you know, a climate change experiment. And again, it's there's not a lot to this. So we go into the BCCBL. Um, the climate change experiment is a secondary experiment. So it's we've already run something else, and now we're going to run a climate change experiment. And to do that, you just give it a name. So test, uh, go to next, and then we're going to select a source experiment. So we've got a bunch of SDMs that we've run already. Um, I'm not sure which one I should use, but we'll, we'll just pick one randomly here. And, and we'll close that. OK, and these are the species distribution models that were run as part of that experiment. So we ran, it looks like we ran quite a few. And we'll click the ones that we want to project into the future. So we're going to predict um, uh, what we're going to use a boosted regression tree. Now, um, thresholding, there's a whole, you know, there's tons of papers about how to threshold. Um, I think hopefully down the track will allow a user to, you know, type in their own threshold. But for now, um, based on that experiment, you can go with the, the standard 0 0.5 as the threshold. Um, and it looks like in this case, that's not bad for this particular model. Um, but there are times when you're maximizing the two, true positive rate plus the true negative rate um, is gives you a very different value than 0 0.5. If that's the case, you might want to choose it. Here, it doesn't look like it matters too much. Let's see if it matters. And oh, here's one. So for our bioclim uh, variables, if we set a threshold at 0 0.5, we're probably going to get some pretty silly results. But if we could set it at um, maximizing the two positive rate plus the two negative rate, um, we're going to get a better result. You know, we're going to um, get more presences uh, selected in this case. So lots to think about and how we're going to threshold. Which one of those options do we want to choose? Right? Um, it'll make a big impact on your prediction. And you just select as you know many of these that as you want to project into the future. You select next. And then we're going to select some future climate data. So about half the data in eager comments is future climate data. Right? And there is tons of it to choose from. Right? So I might know the global circulation model that I think is going to represent the future variables in the best way for my region. Right? So a lot of times climate models will perform reasonably well in one area and not so well in another. Um, you might need a real regional climate model to perform very well in places like mountains or so there's there's a lot of climate climate models to choose from, a lot of global circulation models to choose from. You want to choose the one that's best for your species. Um, you might know, oh, well, I want to go with the uh, Australian, you know, this data set. And you might know the resolution. You might want to match the resolution that was in your original data. So you might select, you know, if, if my original experiment was run at one kilometer resolution, you're going to get a better result if you match that in your future climate data resolution, right? And you choose, and then you have to choose the emission scenario. What? So let's just choose an emission scenario and the climate data, and we're going to choose a year. So this is under this 
emission scenario in this um, uh, global circulation model, we're going to choose, we want to see what this species distribution model might look in 2075. Okay, we, we can just select that variable. And then we pick our study area, just like we always do. Um, so you can choose all of Australia. Um, this is just the original study area of your experiment, but you can do whatever you want in terms of study area. You could, again, choose all of Australia, draw a polygon, um, all kinds of things. And then you hit run, right? So that's fairly easy. Point and click dashboard tools runs in about 10 minutes. Um, this is an example of the species distribution that, you know, of, of the powerful owl that we talked about in a previous video. This looks like an okay model, but probably isn't when we think about it, but not bad. That's telling us where um, powerful owls are likely in Southeast Queensland. When we predict that into the future, so if we look at future predictions, so these are the results of that experiment that, um, that I just showed you. We can see that, my goodness, you know, there's a lot of areas that are going to be unsuitable for powerful owls under that emission scenario, you know, under that climate model. And um, if we get, you know, if we look at how the probability of occurrence is going to change, oh, it looks like I was using a different underlying model in this one. Anyway, you get a sense of how the probability is going to change from that base layer to the new layer. And you can look at your um your r script that was used to generate that model in this case it's fairly simple you're just um predicting a model object into the future so i guess i just want to highlight this is really easy to do in eco commons but you really want to be careful and really think through these options very closely so we've got a lot of information in support articles, a lot of information on our website. We've got a nice um, overview of species distributions and climate modeling um, is one of those support articles. We've got a really useful table that highlights, well, what are the different emission scenarios and where can I get more information about them? Because maybe I don't know which emission scenario I want to go with. Um, which general circulation model do I want to study? You know, and I can look up more information on those um, and which of the various um, data sets that are included you know what emission scenarios are they using at what resolution um, what global circulation model are they using and links to for example the global circulation models that are being used or the data set in this case world Clim. so lots and lots of information to make really important decisions, if you want to make an accurate prediction about the future distribution of the species, one of the most important components of that is selecting the right climate data to predict to. And uh, also within the support articles, you'll find links to other papers. There's a good one from Linda Beaumont on how you're going to make sense of choosing which climate data to run. Right? It's a big decision. It's not an easy decision. But our dashboard tools, once you make that decision, make it very easy to check that out. Um, again, thank you for tuning in to the, to the latest video. If you want to learn more, there's a lot of education material. Uh, we've got code. Uh, we've got a GitHub links. Um, you can find all of that in, in our learn and support pages. And you can contact us directly. And again, if you run into something when you're running a model that you think is a bug or that um, you want clarified, like maybe it wasn't clear in, in any of the support material what the heck that, that button was doing, just click on that feedback button on the right-hand margin. Give us some feedback and submit it. And finally, you can sign up to our newsletter if you want to keep up with what we're doing. This is, uh, we're labeling this as a beta version because every now and then something doesn't work and we're not clear exactly why, you know, some functions are not running to completion. But generally, um, things are working, things are producing uh, good results and 
and all the rest of it. You just have to be careful on the inputs that you give to this sort of powerful tool. Anyway, um, might see you at the next video. Thanks.